Well, technology tells me I'm live, so I must be live. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all well. Welcome to the workshop. It's been a while since I've done a Tuesday night live. Oh, I've been so busy. I do apologise. I do try to, to get these things done for you. It's not always possible at the moment. So welcome along. Uh, this evening is going to be some wet turning. I'm going to get soaked. Uh, I've got a piece of oak on the lathe, just like this, exactly like this. And I'm going to turn this into a nice, delicate little pot, vessel. Very thin, this was three millimeter. Um, does have an inclusion just there, which you can see through, if you can see the light through it. And fortunately, it has just developed just there, a little crack. Uh, but it's oak, and to be honest, it kind of adds to the character of the piece. So helping me out tonight, I have to get close because I've moved everything round. Computers are here now, not over, not over there. Just here. Um, so helping me out, I've got these reprobates. I've got Pete from Twisted Trees, who's the tech support and beer timer. Good evening, all. I've got Ruby Claire, RPT, who's Mark's mentor. She is. And we've got Dan Smith, RPT, Mark's AA sponsor and sugar level checker. <laughs> yes, he is. God, man, he's, he's like a nag. Constantly on him. Every day I'll get a message, what's your blood sugars? I'm not even awake yet. He's asking me what my blood sugars are. You can't you can't have a go at someone for caring, can you? No. Oh, you well, know. yeah, I can. I yeah. can. I appreciate, guys in the back. I do appreciate it. <laughs> right. That my phone's just gone off telling me, Oh, you've gone YouTube. It's probably oh, yeah. your sugar level. You've gone live. No, I've gone I've gone live on YouTube apparently. Right. Um, I've watched it then. Yeah. Uh these guys are gonna read out any questions. The piece I've got on the lathe is this. So I've trimmed a flat on this end and I'm going to make it a natural edge. So the bark is the headstock end. I'm going to get this spinning up. Go over it. I'm going to use the uh, visor for the first initial shaping. And uh, so I'm going to sound like Darth Vader, a bit of a Cornish Devonish Darth Vader, and uh, get the initial shaping done. And for the initial outside shaping, I am going to use half inch spindle gouge, a la the great Richard Raffin. But it's only for the outside shaping. So lay speed down to zero, turn the lathe on. And I've already tested this out. It's up to about 1,400 revs. So might have a bit of light. How's that looking? A bit washed out? It's a bit washed out, but we can deal with that if you need it. Turn it off. Right. Right. Over to you guys. Can we do the chat then? I'll let you do the honors, Pete. Okay. First thing this evening was uh, Wayne, Wayne Woodturner. He was followed by Dan, Ruby, and myself. Um, well, I'm not going to say hello to because we've already done that bit. Then we got, oh, it's just jumped on me. Andy, the Valley Wood Turner. Just as you get it all lined up, it just goes to the bottom. And Robert from High Sport Wood Woodworks. Dot of Green Cove, good works. Barry Chitty, Douglas Mungham, Terry Bartlett, Paul Hayton, John Scarborough, Roy the Boy. Tony Smith, 
Okay, let's turn it this way. James Crawford. Lucy Bundy Rowe, the shorter half of the partnership. Andy at door 60. Susie the Swisswood Turner. Can't be, I might have this done by the time you're finished. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm an amateur. I keep telling you that. Brian with a Y. George Kent. Anthony Green. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, this jumped to me twice, I might miss some. Now, the reason I'm going this way, just to interrupt you, Zippy, the reason I'm going this way is because this is natural edge. I'm forcing the bark onto the wood. If I come all the way round, I might lift the bark off. So I'm just getting the bark, pushing it back onto the wood. And you've got 44 watching you, and nine of them like it. Can I put the thumbs up? Oh, that's good. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Dan, that's a big question for you. Is it true you can use the two grip similar to Nair, to keep your head carefree and have a nice flow? It appears to be true for Mark, yeah. What's that? You're using the true grit like Nair to keep your head hair free and, and glowing. Who said that? Put him in time now. <laughs> Gone, it was Harry. <laughs> I agree with Douglas. Come on, you guys. At least hit the like button. I don't know. Has he earned it yet? I haven't really done anything yet. So, Mark, what... What's the thinking behind using the spindle gouge over a ball gouge then on that? Uh, it's just it's just a tool you can use. It's got a nice big long wide uh, wing so you can take a lot off. So the rest is close, you're on the outside, not a problem. And look at those big nice big shavings got coming off. A little bit of a flat there. Matthew Lawrence has joined us. Good evening. It's a nice bit of a hook, is that, with the sapwood? It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It certainly is. Shane Hurst has joined us. And so has uh, Woodwork Learner, Andy. Good evening. Actually, this is an ideal project for, you know when somebody says to you, oh, we've had the uh, tree surgeon around, we've got all these logs, and you turn around, they're all three inches thick. Yeah. Pretty good project for those. They also make nice gifts to hand out to somebody. Yep, easy to carry, easy to store. Now, something right, you, you could do with that is put a small pot in it and then have a small plant inside. I can't do that, Ruby. You can't? No, I can put a pot of earth inside it, but uh, plants will just die. <laughs> <laughs> plants have to be like, yeah, just 
don't stand a chance. Well, I'll give it to Lisa then. Yeah, she's okay with him. Yeah. But if she goes away for a weekend, yeah. which she does regularly, I'd do my best to kill him. <laughs> well, there's a good question here from uh, Robert. Do you typically wax your bed before turning wet, wet oak? Yes, I do. This bed was waxed <laughs> this afternoon, and it'll be waxed again straight after this live. Even <laughs> before I go up to the co-op and get some more doom bar. We just had another good question for you from uh, Woodwork Learner. Mark, can you show us your grinder and not the one on your phone? <laughs> ah, you're very funny. Right. Uh, no, not that one. So it's the, this one, I believe, the one you're talking about. You mean th this, this grinder there? Uh, that, that grinder. One. You cover that up because it's going to get wet by the wood, I would imagine. That, that's exactly how I've protected the grinder yeah. from, and obviously, the safety covers. That are Mark, have, you got, have you got another cloth like that on the bench over in the corner? Because <laughs> is that yeah. one covering the safety covers? Uh, <laughs> no. Sorry. No, you can't. No, shut up. You can't see them. They're... <laughs> Here. It's nice to see that you're using your RPT smocks to effective use. That's not my RPT smock. My, RP, my other blue RPT smocks hanging up. Oh, this right. is just the ordinary one. <laughs> Shut up, you lot. <laughs> you mean I have to get a blue RPT smock now? Uh, and all the cool kids have got the blue ones. Oh. Well, you'll have to send me a link where I get my blue one from. Yeah, Lavelle is where you want it. He's got all the uh, logos and everything. Yeah, he doesn't pour us. Yeah. You get a discount as well, Rippy. Oh, wow. Yeah, if you're not in the yeah. RPT and you want an RPT smoke, it costs you extra. <laughs> <laughs> there was somebody who did that. They weren't an RPT and they bought an RPT smoke. Right, so that's. Oh no, I've got to, I've got to move the. <laughs> don't move, don't move the uh, smoke. I'm not reading out Robert's comment because it will be of assistance to you, and, and therefore I'm not going to tell you what it is. <clears throat> exactly, Robert. So, exactly, exactly. I don't have stone wheels. So it's. You know, so you want to make sure you don't walk into it by accident. Something like that. <laughs> don't worry, folks. If you think bloody hell he's going through this, it's going to be fast. Well, actually, Mick just said that Wayne, Wayne would have finished by now. I've just just slowed down because I made that because I'm using cold jaws, uh, O'Donnell jaws. I forgot that the uh, tenon on this has to be shorter. Got to be short, yeah. But that's all right. It can just go back between centers. So you put it back between centers as it helps. <laughs> ah, we now have an off-centered foot. So all I have to do is just trim this down ever such a little bit. Um, Matthew Lawrence has said, have you got any experience with the Ashley Isles Universal Thread Chaser tool? I haven't. I use the Sorby ones, but I believe uh, Terry Bray uses the Ashley Isles one, a uh, universal one, and he's done some thread chasing recently, so go and have a look at his. Yeah, the Hamlet ones work well as well. I've got Hamlet and Sorby. Yeah, I've got the Hamlet ones. So, no, I haven't used the uh, Ashley Isles. The Ashley Isles Universal, Universal is, is um, a slightly different approach to it, but it uh, does make it uses, sense. Uses, yeah, it uses one tool to both the inside and the yeah, outside male and female threads, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. I just haven't used one. Uh, Glenn and Lisa Teagle 
from the UK Woodcraft and Carbide Chisels has joined us. Hi, I'm how you doing, but he's come to take the mickey. He usually does. Oh, yeah. We all do. That's what we're here for. That's better. That sits down flat now. And did you, as Glenn, uh, as Glenn's did you, here, we'll do his thing. So that's tight. Quarter turn. That's tight now. Did you deliberately paint the jaws on your chuck, or is it? Um, did they come like that? Uh, no, they, they, I didn't deliberately do it. Right. It just kind of happens. Right. I didn't know if you'd, we were launching some sort of customised jaws. No. It's called, right. It's called being an artist, apparently. Ah. I know. Tell me about it. Right. So hold on. I can take the visor off now. Uh, Hodge Hodge really... Bruce Bruce says he's had the Carter and Sons threading tool for about 18 months. I really have to say I should try using it. <laughs> <laughs> it really is heartening doing threads, I've got to say, because you do a thread, you get it right. And then six months later, you go to unscrew it, and something's gone oval, or something's gone out of shape, and it's really annoying. You think, why <laughs> yeah, you I, had, I, I had a go. I got some threads done. They worked out first time, worked out really well. And I haven't had the heart to try it again, because guys are screwed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've reached the pinnacle. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't that's it. Me. Right, so I've, because I've changed this all around, laid back to zero, That's 1,400 revs, that's enough. I'm going to need a bit of light. How's that? Is that right? So we're onto a bowl gouge now. Spider Space said, looking at the jewels, I would guess Mark has used the Mike Walked masking tape method. Mike's got a video coming out in the next few days, actually. It's out today. It's out today, is it? Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was editing it. But, uh, we haven't seen it Let's yet. Have a look at this. Yeah, I was watching it just before I came down here. This might end up being natural edge instead of live edge. And... Um, Kim Prestridge has just popped in and said, hi, Kiss. Hello, Kim. How you doing, darling? Not sure I can deal with this public show of affection. <clears throat> Ruby, you're muted. Yeah, I'm muted because I have another friend joining me who's uh, watching your program, Rob Summerlin. From Woodsley Summercraft. Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. How you doing, Mark? How you doing, mate? Good, good. Thanks. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. Keep he just honest. dropped off a log for me since I don't have enough in my garage. That's right. Yeah. Well, you can never have too many, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's come up with a good, good idea. The trick to hand chase threads is to make them so loose that you don't have to. I don't even need to screw them on. Just pop them in place. Now that works. That's a French fit. Yeah. One and a half mil thread and a three mil gap. That'd be perfect. Has anybody um, had a look closely at the Simon Hope threading system that he's doing now? The threading jig? Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of threading jigs, and I find actually by the time you set it up, it's faster to do them by hand. I think the thing is, if, if you've got a spare lathe that you can leave set up, or if you are doing a huge number of threads, a threading jig makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. But if you've got to set it up, and you're only doing um, a short um, you know, five mil or so thread, which is the usual, and you might as well just do it by hand. Now, the trouble with all, all specialist tools, really, is they're brilliant, but you need to be doing a lot of to make them, well, A, to pay for them, B, to make them worth setting up. 
Yeah. I'm probably going to use uh, Simon Hope on this, actually. I think that's... I'm, I'm going to invest in one of Simon's little pro hollowers. Because I've got pro the... Hollers. I was saying to Mark earlier on in the week, I've got the I've got the jig, you know, the actual big big arm and yeah. stuff. And um, I've got it, it. It's the same with that, isn't it? You've, if you're going to do a lot, then you can leave it set up, but Definitely. it's a pain to set up. Now, I would recommend that, mm. and I would also recommend the um, Steady Pro from Sorby. Mm. That will take you from four inches um, to eight inches in normal hollowing with little effort. And if you're going beyond eight inches, that's when you want to set your, your rig up. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. I could have a little go with this one. It's seen as if he's Glenn in the Glenn Teagles. Is yeah, he still he's there? Good. Still here? Have a little go with this. Uh, Robert has said, Mark, do you prefer the round tool rest? He doesn't see many experienced turners using them. He never had drag one himself. Still a bit low. Um, yes, I do actually prefer using it. Uh, recently, in Newark, we were using one of the robust type. And for getting shear cuts, we were getting problems. I think the reason why you see a lot of round ones on the market now is because there's a lot of um, tool post systems that there's a lot more people doing them. Well, a lot of the tools, the corners are very sharp, and if you haven't sanded them round, then they tend to leave marks in the uh, regular tool posts, and I think that's why they go to the round ones, because they can use a harder steel. Katie, the corner's made is joining us. Good evening, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. <laughs> well, Brooklyn is asking if you could use a ring tool to hollow that out. Um, not really. No, it's not end grain. It's just side grain. Ring tools are for end grain. Um, Pretty much exclusively. I mean, you can get away with so much, but. Glenn has said, Mark, no scraping. No scraping. Yeah, yeah, I don't want it side. Well, on the, on the piece that's small, you could always show them Stuart's method of doing it with your uh, spindle gouge. <laughs> yeah, not on this piece, I'm not going to. Stuart's a bit of an animal when it comes to hollowing out. I'm not going to tell him you said that. <laughs> Uh, he knows. He doesn't mess about. And Casey says you turned a bottle stopper tonight completely by herself. I might have misread that completely, but that's what it says in my mind. Now this one is going to be more like the little open, uh, closed form part that I did. And the next one I'll do, I'll do more of a bowl. I need to get this a lot thinner. Ben's not actually saying it, but I can read his mind. He's saying, drop the handle, Mark. Oh, I'm on the Simon Hope one now.
Uh, Roy's asking for his questions. His messages are coming through. Um, that one, Greece. Uh, Roy's question from earlier up the chat was, Mark, how many are you making tonight? Probably uh, two. And before that, long time before that, he asked if your sugar levels were all right. Yeah, funny that. Well, we did straighten you out on that before you started, Mark. Ben has just put in, Mark, we spoke about this. Drop the handle and get on the tip. Who said what? Ben said, drop the handle and get on the tip. <laughs> Oh, get me on the spindle couch. God. It's turning by committee here. Yeah, and you can't even burn it afterwards because it's not dry. Hey? You can't even burn it afterwards because it's not even dry. No. By the time I get over, though, we could we could have a little bonfire with all these uh, burning pieces you guys are making. I burnt mine as soon as I finished last night, Ruby. I know. I was disappointed <laughs> you wouldn't wait till I got there, and I could have had some marshmallows or something, you know. Tell the truth, that that split was actually opening whilst it was spinning before I even put the tool on it, so it was it was impossible to finish that as it was. So. It was no loss to burn it. Well, yeah. Oh, you can't hear the bottles open. Just open another beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you read Todd's uh, comment that you should have signed Mark's name to it and then donated it? <laughs> to be I'm absolutely not, honest, if I not if I wasn't on live, I would have looked at that split at the beginning, and I would have done a smaller bowl and a wider rim and avoided the split problem. It would have been a nice piece of wood. I'm going to have to but, start doing what Andy does now that I've moved everything around. Once I uh, cut that um, down to size and that split was opening up as it was spinning, then there was nothing else I could do with it, really. I could have resined it, I suppose, but I don't do resin, so that couldn't happen. Dan, are you still awake? Just about, mate, yeah. Oh, okay. It's gone very quiet. I was just drinking my Jägermeister, to be honest. It was just numbing the pain. <laughs> I was just reading back through the chat to make sure we'd not missed any, anything. I'm going to paraphrase Ben's uh, comment. He said, Mark, you need to try the Sorby Hollower. You've tried every other tool. That last bit I added on, but <laughs> who said who said that about the coffee break? Mick Jews. Mick. Do do what you did at Newark, Mark, and have a coffee break like for six hours. Yeah. It was it was noted actually, considering that I was paying for the stand. Did he really do that? No, but <laughs> Hey, well, hey, I didn't have a coffee break for six hours. I don't think Dan even bought a coffee. Well, I mean, when you've got Merker's, when you've got Merker's uh, corporate card, then Merker did a lot of the buying the coffees that day. Oh, did they? Oh. You benefited from some of them. Hey, we paid for somewhere to park you, Mark. What more do you want? Yeah. I noticed it is you parked him away from your main stand to keep back your um stop me annoying your customers. Well, it, it worked very hard actually, did uh, Mark. 
Yeah, he did all right. I walked past a few times. He was actually turning you got, his you got, you got your money's worth. Oh, wait. <laughs> Chris from Bailey Wordworks has joined us. Welcome, Chris. Good evening. Uh, well, I've been on time this half hour. Wait, you says Wi Fi dropped out. Is this the same pop, Mark? <laughs> So, Mark, you don't like my thickness gauge I gave you. Okay. What, oh, these ones? Sorry, did you say the calipers? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit thick. I think I might just use... Is that standard figure eight calipers? We only saw one end of it. Yeah, look that way, yeah. Those ones. Uh, the, the bent figure eights, yeah. Oh, I've not seen them before. Who's are these, Roby? They're the famous, famous guys. And Andre Andre Martel in uh, Montreal makes them. All right. They work exceptionally well, especially if you have, like, if you had a, a hollow form that was undercut, right from the lid. With yeah, the yeah. Open. I see that, yeah. You can get in quite nicely. Douglas Mung, I've got a question for you, Dan. How are things going with True Grit? Mm, very well, thank you. Yes, very well. Question for Dan. How long has True, True Grit how long has True Grit been around for? Um, about uh, was it about well, we started developing it just before just before Harry Grit, so yeah. yeah. So yeah, about uh, September. About November. Yeah, started developing at end of September, uh, and then obviously it would. Well, yeah, probably first couple of weeks in October we started working on it, and then got it out there for the start of November. But it's going really well. So you Katie says, "If you get down to Cornwall when you're over, Ruby, give her a shout, and I'll come and get some marshmallows for the fire." Hmm. Quite make up his mind. It's more like coming through there than I can see from the perceived thickness. I can that see. sounds like a good good deal. I'll come over to get some uh, marshmallows from you if I'm in the Cornwall area. Scraper, because those six mil cutters are good, but they're a little bit too good. They leave very fine ridges sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you see some of the bigger diameter. I think um, I think Glenn and Lisa are um, about to go into singing a song by the looks of it. Yeah. It's all about the bevel, about the bevel, no scraping. Yeah, once you find that's the not scraper, spot, that's they a cut the cutter. So you're on the bevel when you're cutting. It's got its own little bevel. So yeah. But that's a cutter. That ain't a scraper. <laughs> that's a scraper. Let's have a look. See how thin we are now. Uh, if I go over it. Still just up here a bit. Just needs to yeah. thin out a little bit up there. So you're turning this according to the color of the, the light coming through the wood. Well, sort of. And thin, yeah. Well, you can either go down really thin and hope it doesn't crack as it moves or you can take a chance on slightly thicker and a, and a bit more structural support. 
What you need, Mark, is a light that's shining directly in so you can see the color while you're turning. Try and do that, but problem with that is well. The way I'm reading this, Mark, is you're on detention and you have to attend uh, Glenn's workshop for a lesson on how to use scrapers, not as scrapers. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very funny man. Right. I know that's not going to help you a lot, but. Well, that works quite well, to be fair. Well, it doesn't help. That doesn't, no. that doesn't <laughs> help from that angle, but don't worry about it. You've got to cut it. Do that. That works. That done. <laughs> nice. I say, Glenn, I, I don't use carbides apart from the Simon Hope hollowing tool. Um, no problem is I can't get in there. Not because I don't believe in carbides, I just never never own, owned one, so I've never used one. But uh, I watch your channel, and, and yeah, they do seem to do a good job of cutting. Which uh, question are you referring to, Lucy? Learner, the true grit, the only grit still made in UK now, which oh, right. has gone across the pond. There are a number of people that make their own. Um, I don't think there's anything else commercially available in the UK. I think, I mean, I think chestnuts, chestnuts is it's not the, it's not the same product. No, it's, it's, not, product it's a different really, kind of it? yeah, but it, but they're they're British made a chestnut. I think oh, yeah, they are British made yeah. Ben is suggesting you just set fire to the inside and then you won't have to put have the light in the way. Yeah, that's true. Or what I could do. Uh, Roy the boys asked another question that we've missed. Roy, do you always put big question marks in front of them? Because I can't see them half the time. Right. Uh, how thin are you going how thin are you doing it, Mark? Was Roy's question. Well, as thin as I dare. See what happens. So that could have the outside smaller than the inside. You got sixty one in the chat now. Or sixty one watching, sorry. How many of them like it, Dan? That's a very good question. How do I? You're asking someone who has not got a clue how to operate this. Um, Hang on, let me close uh, the chat. Thirty of them like it, according to mine. Thirty thumbs up. So there's um, sixty-two watching. Thirty thumbs up. So thirty-two could um, have a free experience of clicking the thumbs up button. <clears throat> Now, Brian with a Y says that he can't get Yorkshire grit or true grit in Spain, so he's made his own calling it Blancashire grit. That's pretty <laughs> innovative. Right. Can you guys see how thin that is now? Well, it's getting there, isn't it? Yeah. It's getting there, yep. I wouldn't push my luck if I were you going no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Go on, Mark. See if you can go further. I wouldn't push my luck with you, but I encourage Mark to go further. Go on. You can do this. We believe in you. Uh, actually, you for yourself, Dan. I don't. <laughs> oh, cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Ruby. Hey, would I uh, have advised you to quit while you're ahead otherwise? We have every confidence in you. 
Keep going. Do it, Mark. Just there. Just there. <laughs> Andrews, what's the uh, difference between uh, chestnut grit and tree grit? And chestnut cotton polish doesn't really cut, and it doesn't really polish. It's formulated differently. You, you've got to use it and figure it out yourself, but it's formulated differently. I, I would say that it's more for a uh, when you finish finishing. If you've got anything on there which uh, requires a bit of a polish, then you can use it, like a, a lacquer or something. So that's my personal opinion. I guess, yep. Dan, when I come over in a few weeks, I'll have to pick up some from you. Well, Mark, it depends where you, who you're visiting. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're down Mark's where Mark's got a stock, and there's quite a few places now that, uh, well, well, there's... There's not many that haven't now. Ruby's gonna, you think Ruby's going to buy it, do you? <laughs> well, I think she's nearer you than us. Is she down your way as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, she's staying with me. So we'll, we'll probably visit Mark and we'll probably visit Axminster and we'll probably visit Yandles. <laughs> so there's a few options there. Yeah, they all sell it. Right. Douglas is saying he likes watching the Japanese turn really thin pieces. Um... See, I don't. I mean, I've done them, but when you get down to that thickness, you you kind of end up with a very plasticky, papery feeling product, and I don't really like the end end result. So that's the little natural edge pot. So I've got a bit of wood that. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. let it dry. Keep it because that, that is a lovely little painted scene you've got there, mate. Mm. Yeah. It's a beautiful really sunset good. scene. Yeah. Just well, set you, up with a lamp on the top. Yeah. You could, you could put a small tea light inside it and it would show up that way. Not all the box stayed on, but pretty much. Anyway, so I'll let that dry. And Robert's got another suggestion. Yeah. You said you could cut it in half and see how even you've got the wall, the wall thickness. Then they you'll know if it's it. going to crack or not. <laughs> Which I could... I tell you what I could do. Where's I thought he was actually going to do it then. No, no, no. I do have somewhere over here. I, do I did anymore? that once. It's probably under that blanket. It's not under the blanket. No, I've got a um, jam chuck that I, a long one. I don't know what I did what, with it. What flavour is it? It's a very extravagant jam chuck because it's a piece of green art. Um, ben has just pointed out that he thinks Wayne's workshop might be tidier than yours now. I was just thinking that you, you really haven't made an effort to tidy, have you, today? Uh, that I is... just noticed that old pillar drill in, in the floor over there. I've just seen that. Last July, I drove down in the van and installed the new pillar drill from Terry's workshop into yours. And that one was redundant at that point. Why is it still there? Because I haven't sold it. If anybody wants it, feel free to ask. What's in the Amazon box under your uh, chainsaw helmet? And that's his, his uh, grinder guides. <laughs> That's about 200 uh, light bulb planks. I don't realize Amazon did light bulb planks. Yeah, I send most of my stuff out in Amazon boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I have to buy stuff on Amazon just so I can send, send the parcel out. I think we need <laughs> your camera change, Mark. Yeah, change camera, Mark. Oh, yeah, sorry. We were all enjoying the view of your workshop, but yeah. Woodwork learner has said, "Mark, can you turn the lights, the, turn the brightness down, or at least put a hat on?" <clears throat> Robert says, "Does RPT not have some sort of workshop safety? Looks like some tripping hazards there." I didn't see that on their list, but you do have to have a safety cabinet and a fire extinguisher. Oh, yeah. Is it right to have a wild Bengal tiger in the corner? Like 
bat. Everybody has one of those. <laughs> I still gotta pick one. Hey, what was that, Rob? What did Mister Summerlin just say? I was just saying I've still got to pick up a uh, safety cabinet. I got the fire extinguisher and the um, first aid kit, but I don't have the uh, chemical storage unit yet. I use a filing cabinet at the moment. Yeah, you've got to have a... Um... A certified safety cabinet yeah. for holding your flammables. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to order that from Uline. They sell them. Well, now that they're accepting international people, maybe I can get Rob to apply. <laughs> After you I'm, I'm only when you think I'm good enough. Don't let her bully you, uh, Rob. She's, um... no, she's oh, we're trying to bully you into it. <laughs> yeah, but it's not working, is it? Yeah, but I haven't got over there yet. I haven't got room for a safety cabinet, so I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> Put it out on the porch between the two buildings. Uh, then it would be a trip hazard. I'll, I'll find a spot for it when I get over and clean your shop again. Yeah, it does need you to visit, actually. It's a bit of a mess here. Yeah. Call bus marks at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not as bad as marks, but, you know. God, that ain't going to work. I'm going to have to take this off another time. Well, the last time I saw Marks, it wasn't quite as messy as it is now. It had a lot more room. <laughs> yeah, he's doing production work now, Ruby. He's, he's got I've been power. busy. <laughs> I thought, I've, thought, I've actually thought been the... properly busy. I thought you were talking about the top of his head. Ah, well, then... he did have more hair when I saw him last, too. Robert has just come up with an excellent idea. He said, just pour the fan balls into old Coke bottles so it doesn't look so dangerous anymore. Good plan. Right. Second one. Is this the speed run? Yeah, you're going to get us off screen then, Mark. Why are you not on screen? Huh? Will you put us there? I didn't touch it. Oh, dear. You must have. There, that's a better yeah. view. <laughs> Thank God for that. Breathe out now. It was mommy hair. <laughs> I noticed you used yeah, some head centers so. on both ends. Yeah. Better grip. Yes, definitely. Right. So I'm just altering to get the wings level. McDoos wants to know what's under the blanket, Mark. <laughs> we should never ask Mark that question. I don't know about you guys. Why, why the big attraction to what's under the blanket? It's, it's not a blanket. It's my smoke. And it's keeping my grinder what? safe from shavings. Yes, that's why it is. He's worried about his grinder shivering, so he's keeping it warm. <laughs> Anybody needs to know any more than that. <clears throat> ben said, Ruby, can you ask Rob a question? Can you ask him what it's like being sat next to a legend? I think actually I have to die before I can become a legend. I'm not oh, planning on that. it in the near future. <laughs> yeah, I'm you're not doing that, that yet. Day. Very intimidated at times. It's the eyebrow that does it. The yeah. When she raises that one eyebrow, you know you've done something wrong. Well, Ruby's been in my workshop a few times, and I've formed the opinion that when she's teaching, she has a 12 inch ruler ready to wrap across your knuckles at any moment. You know, I had that happen to me in science class when I was a kid, and uh, I kind of was laughing because it tickled. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher was really mad. I, I yeah, I think it's Ruby because it's not going to tickle. No. <laughs> In all the years that I taught, so that's over 36, uh, I never once used uh, a ruler or a wrap the kid. 
Casey's gonna go. No. Who's gonna go? Katie. Hi, Katie. Thanks See you soon. We go over here, Mark. We have Paul. Ah, Stephen the Wood Dude has joined us. Welcome, Stephen. You're late. What's your excuse? He was probably turning. Hi, Stephen. Are you trying to go for the same sort of design, Mark, or are you going for something different this time? Just slightly different. More open, this one. Are you going for the same thickness, or are you going a bit, a bit thicker this time? Same thickness. Lucy's lost Andy, he must be out in the garage. And Greenhaven Creations is late because he was turning in the shop, which is a perfect excuse, no problem with that. Well, that's why I have a an alarm set on my cell phone so that I'd come out of the shop so I could be here with you. That's because you're a star in your organized, Ruby. The rest of us um, wing it at the last minute. That comes from years of teaching. Don't make the same mistake I made last time. And Wilbert Lerner said, Mark, have you thought about doing a video on how to store your finishes and mess, etc., safely? Be a bit of a short yeah. video, really. Yeah. He says, Fan, uh, shove it in a cupboard. Oh, here you go. Let's record, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark the Channel Woodturner. With all your flammable finishes, store them in a big yellow tin. Finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You didn't point out all the nice little badges and symbols that are on the front of it. Yeah. Uh, very, very hot, hot, run, quick, glue, sticky, sticky. Uh, Jamie, Jamie, you wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> There's a sign in Belgium when you go, come to the Kennedy Tunnel in um, Antwerp. The first place I saw it. I've seen it a few other places since. 
and it's a car with a roof rack and the roof rack is on fire. And I've seen this sign a number of times as I've ridden through and I thought, what the hell does that mean? And apparently you can't carry flammables outside your vehicle in a tunnel. They're all right inside, but they can't be on the roof rack. Right. Kind of makes sense. Which is about as random as you can get for a sign, I would think. I can't say I've come across one of those. No, only place I've ever seen it is Belgium. We're on time. Five minutes. Apparently Andy has had um, five teeth out at the hospital this afternoon. He's feeling sorry for himself. All I can say is please get into one that Brian's talking on and tell him all about the experience because he's got a dental appointment coming up and he doesn't like dentists. <laughs> Gee, I can't say that. I really like mine. What, your teeth or your dentist? Both. The last one he sold was the front one. And it makes it very difficult to talk sometimes. But when I get back from Europe, he'll be putting a brand new one in this place. That's all right. Yeah, if you have a teeth pulled, I, I really highly advise that you get a looking replaced. Feeling a little bit cheated, Mark. You haven't finished school yet. Got at least half a dozen tools by this stage of the whole on the last one. He's found his perfect tool, hasn't he? Now look at him. He's going for it. Not holding back. I almost sense the focus. So I turn when I'm not bothered by cameras. Yeah. Get in it. Get in it. Get after it. I'm not. I'm not commenting on that. That last comment. <laughs> so, what's the advantage of these O'Donnell jaws then? Because then? You used them yesterday, Pete. Now Mark's using them as well. Um, they get you away from the chuck. They give you a lot of workspace on the back of the piece. If you can imagine you want to finish the outside of that piece. Yeah. Then that chuck is spinning well away from your fingers. You've got plenty of room. There's advantages and disadvantages with everything, but it's a huge advantage if you want to work on the back of a piece while you're doing it. Right. Um just hold it in a nice place. Plus, the jaws that Mark's got there, same as I use, you've got one set of main jaws and then you've got two inserts. So you've got three uh, sizes right. of jaw on one one set of jaws, if you like. Right. Um, disadvantages, um, it does tell on the inserts it's very short. Right. It's about four and a half, five mil. All right. Um, so you've got to be pretty accurate with your cutting of a of the uh, tenon or, or mortise, but um, they're just easy to use. Same as I was using the dome jaws for that finial the other day. I mean, that again, you can put your knuckles right next to it, and it, they're in no threat. I was just going to say that I saw those that you that you got those little round oval ones. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and they, they're also for small stuff, they're great. But my O'Donnell's, I can stick a, a 16 inch bowl on it if I want to. All right. Um, and still have the same distance away from any spinning parts mm. or any any hard spinning parts that will hurt my knuckles. I, I tend to agree, Pete, and I find I use them quite often.
I, mean, I was doing that thing. I mean, I did a, a couple of things. I was only filming the one, obviously. Um, mostly because I found a spindle gouge which was um, available for playing with. And I stuck a very, well, a 30 degree grind on it. It was 30 ish. It was done by hand, so it was around 30. And then I ground the bevel, back of the um, bevel away, so it's about one and a half mil. And that's what I was playing with. And, and I last spin, Cindy throws those spindles and um, finials. It's what, what, where the tool works at its best. So I was just mm. playing with that yesterday. fine with strange grinds on tools as opposed to the factory grinds or some of the close to the factory grinds. I like to play with them when the tool is pretty much worn out. Um, and I play with them and then I forget about them because I've got a short memory these days. Um, play with it for a bit, have some fun with it, rewind that tool into something else and then um, a year or two later I'll think, oh, I'll try that again. We've, we've been doing a lot with sharpening in our lessons at the moment. And generally, if people bring a load of tools with them, we'll uh, pick out the worst tool they've got and use that as a as a practice piece. But, uh... Well, I think if you change your grind too much on a tool, sometimes there can be a long um, learning curve to get used to how that tool responds. Mm. Yeah. Like if you're used to using... Um, say a 45 degree angle and you go to a 30 or something that, that can make a big change I gotta say there's, there's a reason that factories produce their tools at 45 degree angle is that it's generally useful um, and you can use it generally for pretty much everything strange well, angles and, and playing with angles is fun um, and I think I'm going to take that one down to, say, 28 degree. Just take it down a little bit more. Um, and maybe make the point a little bit sharper. In an attempt to, I can actually turn an entire... Apart from the roughing out, I can turn an entire finial without touching the skew, just using the one tool in my hand. Martin's just coming um, out, Martin. And now you'll get bored with that in about oh, three weeks. And I'll get back to using the skew again. Yeah, that's thin already. Well, I think people have to realize that you use different angles on your your tools, appropriate to what you're turning. Like if you're turning a platter, you're going to use a much different grind than if you're turning a very narrow vase that's very deep. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, different angles. I mean, that's the um. Joshua was showing the other day, Ruby, wasn't it? Yeah. The, um, like, like for example, if just because somebody comes on and says, well, you should be using this grind, take a look at what it is they're turning and see if that's anywhere close to what you're turning. Mm. Because that grind may not be appropriate for what you're doing. Mark, I've just silently removed my bottle opener from the uh, magnetic rack and totally opened the bottle. Okay, no problem. Almost done. What are your sugar levels like, Mark? Oh, I'll tell you what I can tell you if you like. <laughs> Mark does his sugar levels live on YouTube. There you go. You ready? Oh, technology, yeah. Oh, you're higher. You're going higher. <laughs> Mark, deletes, Mark deletes video from YouTube. <laughs> Actually, I think you went down a little bit by one. No, I've gone up two. That was I thought 23. It, really. it was on 23 before. Yes, it was. Yeah, 25 now. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. 
Starting to look yeah, red, you, though, isn't it? For, uh, for YouTube, I like to run higher. I'll go upstairs and take some insulin afterwards. Because uh, I've had previous where I've gone hypo. I don't want to do that again. Like I did at Newark. Yeah. That was a really nice welcome that you gave to me when you sent me a message when you got there saying, can you send your dad <gasps> over to me because I think I'm near death. I'm about to pass out. Near death because I'm your jelly baby. Joey Richardson, wow. bless her. She knew exactly what to do. You sit, sit me dad and uh, Mark next to each other and they're like, it's like diabetic reunion. <laughs> Andy, but we'll Luna says, uh, Ruby, lots of people say use appropriate angle. But it's difficult to know what an appropriate angle is when you first start. It is difficult to know, but it's also difficult to know lots of things in wood turning, and that's what books are for. Well, if Andy sends me an email at rubyclair2 uh, at gmail.com, what I'll do is I'll send him a guide to help him decide which uh, angle. Yeah, that's good. To yeah. Fill. So that's. Uh, I'll put my email address again in the comments for you, Andy. I think I haven't checked which is how deep have I come? And certainly for every wood turner that um, exists in the UK, and probably elsewhere as well, Wood Turning a Foundation Course by Keith Rowley is must be, must do ownership. You've got to own it, you've got to read it, and then you've got to let it gather dust in the bottom of the drawer somewhere because it's something you should own. You walk you through from building a bench to put your lathe on to the basic cuts. Lots and lots of safety stuff. It's just worth having. That's quite an old book, is that now? I think that's, it, must, it must be 30 year old, that book now. It's got to be 30 year old, yeah, it's got to be. I remember getting it when it first came out. It was it was good reference. Hey, that, right. Change camera. That is actually a little bit thinner than the other one. Actually, the first edition was 1999. 19, right. Yeah. Okay. Probably still got a little bit left that I could take out of the bottom. Everybody will see me do that. It's only eight minutes past. Don't forget to change cameras. Douglas, I'm not saying it's the only book. There's a lot of very good books, but the name of the book, The Foundation Course, what it is, it does the basics. It does, it's not, nothing fancy about it, but anybody starting out in the job really should uh, start with The Foundation Course. Lucy says she's having man good to throw at her. Attempt to keep oh, that yeah, one to yourself, Lucy. Lucy. Was she having what? Maybe do what? What, what, what? Lucy's having mango to throw on at her. I suggest she maybe keeps that to herself. Just switching to the uh, 10 mil carbide. Martin Jackson, Ruby, is there a link to your recent record power? No, record. Power does have a channel, doesn't they? Actually, yes, there is. Um, right now, they're taking that piece and they're editing it, and it will appear on the Record Power uh, YouTube channel.
Mm -hmm. A little bit more, he says, laughingly. Deborah saying he, he just got the book out of Mark suggested it. I've got to say, there's um, I've got lots of wood turning books. Now, I haven't really looked at this book for a long time, but in my actual workshop, I've got wood turning projects by Mark Baker and Keith Rowley's foundation course. They're in the drawer at all times, partly because on the very rare occasions I do teach anybody anything, I um. I get the book out and point at point at it for him. Better. Right. So I bought it when I first started and, and it it was an invaluable good good information to start off with. Still just a little bit down the bottom here, I think. It does look like it, but I don't know if that's his timber or not. I oh, know. Bit wary. No, it's still got about. It's still about five mil the whole way. We just. Uh... We just uh, have another little go down here. And just asked if I can teach you to read. No, no, I can't. I can't teach anything. I've got no patience. I would make, make a wonderful school teacher if only they didn't allow children into schools. I have lots of patients because I've never used any of it. That's fair enough, yeah. yeah. And Andy, I've sent that link to you. You have to let me know what you think of it. People say I've got a lot of patience. I suppose I can't be a driving instructor. Being a driving instructor all those years. Yeah, Mark, you've only got patience when people are paying you for it. Yeah, that's true. I, uh, I've been with you when you haven't been paid and you don't have any patience at all. I know that. Well, maybe I should get hire you to teach me how to drive over there since they drive on the wrong side of the road. No, Ruby, I've actually had a request from um, the Automobile Association, the Royal Automobile Club, the local police, and various other authorities to drive you around rather than let you out behind the wheel. Yes, yeah, yeah. Feels kind of interesting. I've been having a chauffeur because I never get one over here. Right. Let's have one more look at this. Because we drive on the right side of the road. No, you don't. We do. Nope, you drive on the wrong side of the road. No. But we drive on the correct side of the road. We drive on the right side. You drive on the right, which is wrong, and we drive on the left, which is right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laurel and Artie are at it again, folks. I guess we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> Martin says that he has the books, but he has no patience. He went to the University of YouTube. Well, back when I started turning, we not only didn't have YouTube, we didn't even have books like they have out now. 
I was just really lucky to uh, run into some excellent turners. I don't know if you guys can hear the microphone. Yeah, right sort of, but no, I don't know if you could hear the change. Oh yeah, I, I yeah. pitch, and so that's why I stopped suddenly. That's consistent. That's about three mil all the way up. So I'm happy with that. Now we'll change the camera. And turn that one off. That one on. There you go. Now it's not going to be the same color there because that's a bit of a inclusion. But it's pretty. It looks pretty good, Mark. Do I've got a real yearning to do something like that. Stick the light on the end of it, and then use it as a painting by numbers and just color it into those colors. That's brilliant. It's pretty, though, isn't it? It's a nice way of doing it. In fact, I can't do that because I'm rubbish. Instead of doing it end grain, (laughs) if I get if I get the log, that's. So people can see how to cut it. Right. So you've got your log, tree, tree orientation, cut it in half, then cut it about here, out there. So for so that, and that try and take there. that way you're taking out the pith. Yeah. Get the pith out, but then that's the bit. Got a camera on the bouncer, Mark. Can you do it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because you're going to want them to turn another one anyway, anyway, aren't you? Right. So, Mark cuts fingers off. So. You're not allowed to cut your fingers off on a live, by the way. Cut no, it's against it's it's health right. and safety. You see? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, the problem is we can't get the bandits to them in time. So you end up with that piece, right? Then you end up. With that piece. There you go. Turn the camera back around. Spot on. So you end up with a wedge, a cheese wedge. That's your natural edge. You can just take that piece, that bit there, which I can do. What do I do with it? There it is. You can flatten it a bit more. You can wedge that up onto a piece, take that across and flatten it. Just give you somewhere for your tail stock to hit. But that's how that's how they started. And AGK Woodworks is asking, what light is that AG, that eye light, um, that light that you're using, Mark? That's a glow force. Glow, glow force, yeah. Glow force, yeah. Goes, uh, normally lives on here. It's there. It's rechargeable. It's got two different densities. Recharges off a USB. And you can run it off mains. Brilliant, they are. And a magnetic on the end as well. They're good, but you've got to make sure you've got a two amp USB supply, otherwise, it won't run them. Back on camera, everyone. Stop looking at your phone, Dan. Sorry. (laughs) Damn it, you've got to tell me when you're turning it back on. I I was actually, I was reading the chat. Dan, you haven't talked your hair out, mate. Uh, I've passed caring. Right. Might have to do what Mark did. 
So there's that one. That's a bit more open. That one's more of a closed. Both about three mil. I'll sort out a proper jam chuck. Take the bottoms off. Yeah, I'm not sure what they are. They're kind of a cross between a bowl and a vase, aren't they? They're a vessel. I think a vessel is a good vessel. That's why it's vessel's a good name for it. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't go any uh, thinner than those because if you get them right to an eggshell, the problem is that the first time they get dropped or bumped, they break. They're like eggshells. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing, Ruby, because then they got to buy another one. Well, sure. that's that's one other way to look at it. Right. Plus me. Done. It's 20 past nine. Well, yeah, you did a, much... a good job, Mark. Good question, Mark. Will you oil them? Yeah. Oil finish on these. I mean, these haven't even been sanded. These were just showing how to do it. This one was sanded uh, up to 400 and then Danish oiled. Is that the one you did on Saturday, Mark? Yeah. Have you found that the rays, as it's shrinking, the rays are actually starting to stick out? That's yes. what I felt. That's yeah, what I found yeah. with the oak one. Yeah. Start it's got a nice effect. Well. Yeah. yeah. It's got a real tactile feel to it. Have I actually got anybody watching? Because according to this, there's only zero people watching. Yeah, that's, a, that's all there is. No, it's all I've been all night. We, we've been making up the comments, Mark. Okay, I've, cool. I've got where it says there's 50 people still in. Okay. It says 50 on mine okay. as well. But Thank you, everybody, for popping along. Sorry the lives aren't as regular as they used to be. Um, but I am busy. Ben is so, asking, how, how often do I dust all my pieces? And I said, oh, only when I can write my name on them. Yeah, that's about right. It takes a long time. That's why I burn mine. It's much more efficient. It saves dust. A lot of, uh, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm really busy, I'm really busy. I can't get onto it. Well done, Mark. Keep practicing. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> Just, that's all I'm going to say. Just, you know. <laughs> when you can reach the dizzy heights. Um, but I am actually busy. I've got... I've just taken on another two commissions, two contracts for work. So all that stuff at the end has now got to go into storage. And there's going to be pallets of square stock over the other side. Hmm. Oh, thank you, AGK. Yeah, right. Okay. New razor works well. I bought one of those head uh, thingies. One of those head razors. They're brilliant. Hence the new hairstyle. Kim still isn't one hundred percent, but you know. Did you do your eyebrows at the same time? The eyebrows are fine. Ah, uh, sorry. I agree with Kim. I'd rather you you grew it long. Don't you stop. Like the beard's fine though. Beard's fine. Hair's no, it's a sex I appeal. I can't grow this long. It's a sex appeal. Not like Pete. Here. I don't don't have follicles on my head. Right. That's it for me. I've got to go. I've just realised I've got to go to the co-op and buy beer. Yeah, because bulk sugar, yeah, bulk do. sugar's too high. Yeah. Um, thank you very so much. Go with that to inspire somebody. Have a go. So they're not ingrained, side grain. Cut them like I did, and just that two minutes of putting them on my lathe, they've marked the lathe already where I've put them. Yep, they'll do that. So mm -hmm. make sure you've got to clean everything up. Damn, I've got to do that too. Right, so uh, what's today? Tuesday. Wayne's on tomorrow night. Brian's probably on Thursday, or Terry, or Pete. Ryan is uh, supposed to be back. He's, he's got problems with his feet again, but he should be back Thursday. Wayne's back on Saturday. Jamie's back Saturday with Saturday morning cartoons. Sunday will be Steve from SK. Monday, Terry. No, Sunday night, Terry. Sunday Monday, night, Terry. Uh, Paul Finley. Both yes. in the Monday lunchtime, and then hopefully back to Brian or maybe me on Monday evening. Okay, right. Thank you, Thank you to my earworms. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming along. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for trying to look interested, Dan. I, I was. <laughs> I was. I'm just relaxed. You know, you, you've got. So, I've, I've said this to you before, but if you did like a series on kind of sleep stories, I think it would be a real. You've just got such a smooth voice, voice yeah. 
Welcome to Night Time with Mark. I like it. I like it. If I close <laughs> my eyes and, and try and shut your face from it, it works even better. <laughs> try and ignore what the face looks like. Yeah. Go it's nice. to sleep. Go to sleep. He's gone. Close your big <laughs> princess eyes. Yeah, see, oh. Right, there yeah. you go. You made me sing on YouTube. Thank you. Right. Take care, everybody. I'm going to press the button. See you all soon. Good night, all.